as important as math is to many very serious things and, and as important it is to physics and all sorts of very, very serious things, sometimes it is nice to look at the fun side of mathematics or rather the mathematics of some fun things. Now, this can be important because you take something as simple as dice uh, that have been around for thousands of years. Um, this is actually where the, our, some, a lot of our current um, theories of probability come from. Uh, people wanted to explain the probabilities or the chances of rolling something simple as, say, doubles or, you know, what's, is there a different probability between ro rolling a one and a three? Well, this die in and of itself is evenly weighted. And so, and I'm not a very skilled roller, so I'm not going to bias it in any way and saying, okay, I'm going to roll it a specific way to get a four. So we can assume that it is random. The face that appears is random. Now, if we look at this die, we can see that there's six sides. It's it's a cube. So there's six sides to this die. It's a normal six-sided die. Some dice have more sides than that. But we'll look at this one. Let's say the, the one face. Now, this is one of the six faces. And so when we roll it randomly, we can say that it, the chance of rolling a one is one-sixth, or 0 0.16 repeating, if you rather. Now, what if we looked at it of just the even numbers? Two, four, and six. All right here, you can see them. Should be able to see them, two, four, and six. Now, what's the probability of rolling this? Well, we see that there are three options here, and we know that there are six options in total of rolling. We have either evens or we have odds. Now, we take the number of predicted outcomes. Now, we, we want either a two or a four or a six. So we're gonna say that's three. And there's six possible outcomes, so we're gonna say it's three six. So that makes sense. Half of these are even, half of these are odd. So there's a 0 0.5 chance of rolling an even here. Well, now, if, now what, if, what happens if we introduce two dice? What if we roll one and then the other? What's the probability that these are gonna be the same value? Say they're both two. Well, we look at this one and say, well, all right, we're gonna roll this. It doesn't matter what, what number this comes up with. Now we're gonna roll this one. We have to match this value, whether it's a two or a four or a six, it has to match. So this time when we rolled it, it was a two. So what's the probability of rolling a two in this one? That's one six, we just figured that one out. So one six probability of rolling doubles. Now that's if you roll them both at the same time, but you can, you can use the same concepts for uh, rolling them in your hand. Now, what if we look at the same concepts in a deck of cards? Now, there's 52 cards here in my hands. Well, there's only one ace of spades in here somewhere. All right, let's, let's use ace of clubs. There's only one ace of clubs, and there's 52 cards in the deck. Well, what if this was randomly in here somewhere, not, not just on the top? The, if, if we shuffled it up, it would be in here randomly. And so we talk, take a look. There's only one of those cards, but there's 52 cards in total that we're picking from. And so we use the predicted number of outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes, that becomes one over 52. Well, what if we were talking about aces in general? Well, the same concept occurs again. There's four aces, 52 cards. Some magicians also use math in their tricks. Uh, I wanna show you one here. Um, I have 27 cards here in my hand. Uh, not, not the full deck, because I'm not a full magician, but um, I do wanna, do wanna show you the trick. 27 is a pretty cool number when it comes to math. Uh, it's the only number that I know of that some of the digits come up to the square of its own cube root. So um, if you follow that, that's pretty cool. Uh, the cube root of 27 is three, add up two and seven, you get nine, which is three squared. So uh, not as cool as 73, ask Sheldon Cooper why that is. It's gonna start off the same way as just about any other card trick would. I'm gonna ask the cameraman to pick a card here. Okay, so this is your card right here. I'm gonna show the cameraman and, and for you at home, you can watch this as well. Uh, he's gonna tell me if the card is what it was. So he put it back in the deck here. I'm gonna shuffle it up. So that's really random, so I'm not just picking it up. But wouldn't it be cool is if that one showed up right here. Well, obviously that's not gonna happen because uh, there's a one in 27 chance of that happening. There's 27 cards here, I'm not using a full deck. Um, so you have a one in 27 chance of it popping up here. Well, I wanna improve my chances. Uh, so I wanna get it to the top here. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna make three piles here, each one with nine cards. And the cameraman is gonna tell me which of these piles that his card is in so that I can memorize each of these and narrow it down to only nine cards, which gives me a one in nine chance. Okay, so it's in the first one? All right. So, what's going to happen? So I'm going to pick these cards back up. I memorized which ones they are. And now I'm going to deal them out again. So that, um, <clears throat> so that I can narrow it down from one in nine chance to one in three chance. Now, if I remember these cards correctly, then uh, I know which of these nine were, you know, there's nine, nine cards in each stack again. But there was nine cards that were in this first stack that his card was in. So, he's, all right, so it's in the first one here. So, I'm gonna pick these cards back up. Now, there's a one in three chance of that ace of spades being on the top here. Well, that's not, that's not a good enough chance for me. I know which of those three cards it could be, but I'm gonna put them in each one of these three stacks. So, we're gonna do 
three stacks here. And if I remember these cards correctly, then I will have an absolute chance of knowing which card is yours, and I will put it right at the very top of the deck. Okay, it's in this pile. Well, that means if I stack these up here, like so, then your card is right there. Now, like a true magician, I lied to you during it. I wasn't actually memorizing the cards. That's pretty difficult. There is only 27 cards here, but I'm not a memorizer. What was actually happening was each time I took the pile that your card was in and I placed it on the top. So after three times, it ended up at the very top. Now, we can do this trick again, putting this card anywhere in the deck that you want to. I'll hand it over to Numberphile to show that trick. 